So today we're going after the brake pads on this 2000 uh, Toyota Tacoma and it's got 3.4 um, and you can see it's got the fancy rotors on here and the rotors look great. So what you usually do is you just replace these pads inside here. So what you do is you have this clip here it goes in that hole you see right there and it goes in this little hole here and the spring just holds the pads in place. Then you have the these ones here that goes over top, and then you have one that goes underneath. So you go ahead and push that out. And if you just put your pin out, and push this pin out, it comes out. And then you just take a screwdriver, do that. Then your pistons will be pushed back and depressed. So with this style of caliper, you have four pistons, and you have to work each piston back to get it so you can get your pads out also you have to do basically the same kind of thing in order to get your new pads in because you know you don't have to take caliper off you can just take your pins out and put your new pads in and take your old pads out so it's that's all i'm doing here So on these pads there are two different things, there's uh, squeak indicators which are on the bottom of the pads, you can see on this pad here is different from that pad there. Um, under new pads they have squeak indicators on the opposing sides so you have two different sets and styles of pads to put on each side. So these are new pads and as you can see, like I was saying, there's squeak indicators on opposing sides so you can't get them mixed up. So when I took my pads out, I squeezed one side all the way down, so then now I'm be able to get my brand new pad in there. In order to get my pad in the other side, we're going to have to take an old pad and put it in between two pistons. So the biggest thing that you want to do with this, so you see how you have your caliper pistons here on both sides, it's four pistons. And so what you do is you go ahead and you stick a pad back in here, and then you get a screwdriver and you, in this gap right here, and you press. And so that's going to flatten out and it's going to make, you want to make sure it's right in the middle on both those pistons and it's going to make it flat. Once it makes it flat, you can get your cap one, your new pads back in there. And then you're going to do the same on the other side once you get a new pad in there. Then you can slide your pad and the other side back in and then you're done. Ish. And then you got to put your other stuff back together. So I got my pad in between both calipers and I'm just going to work it in there. And you can see it's, it's going back. We're gonna get it nice and flat. I think we're gonna give that a shot. So here is my new pad. And these are different, like I showed in the other thing. Each of these little features, they're opposite of each other, as you can see. So then we're gonna slide that in there. Yeah. Okay, so that one's good. So now we're gonna do the same on this side. Grab my pad, put it in the middle. And I might even have to push back on my pistons just a little bit. Just be careful because they're ceramic and they can't break. So now that I got my pads in place, I went ahead and I stuck my pin through, which line up in my pads. And then I put my pin or my piece of metal in there and got a piece of metal so it goes underneath the pin and then over the pin. That what keeps it in place. So that is how you do the brakes on your uh, 2000 Dakota Tacoma, and that 3.4, so that's the V6. Um, main things you want to take care of is you want to be careful when you push those pistons back with a screwdriver. That's how I always do it, because um, they're ceramic and they can break or they get brindle from all the heat, so you just want to be careful. Um, the pad in between the two pistons really helps, then you get both your pistons back at the same time, and then you can put a new pad in and work on the other side. Um, the other thing is, is that big spring clamp is you want to use the part that's curved like this. You want to put that in first, and then you want to clip the other part over your other pin that goes through after you get your pins through and put the clip over. Hopefully that makes sense. But uh, 
this is helpful, just give me a like, give me a subscribe. Um, if you like what I'm doing for you, tell a friend. And hopefully this is helping you be your own mechanic and save you some time, save you some money. And if you have any questions, like I said, comment down below. So, thanks for watching. Have a good one.